Brand new from Goyojo, the GH340, and the Keep On Testing Spotlight. A big shout out to Goyojo. Thanks so much for sending the thermal camera in for this review. Hey, I'm excited for this one. The new Gyojo thermal camera, the GH340. Sort of mid-range, not low-end, not ultra high-end, but for the DIY kind of guy or girl, as well as your, you know, semi-professional, something that doesn't need uber, uber high-end test instrument. But uh, here we go. So in the box, in a nice box, by the way, lots of good foam padding. Here we have our little intro, 25 hertz, 2.8 inch LCD display, P54 rated, by the way. So you can actually use it in various, uh, you know, conditions, harsh environments, what have you, IP54. It is going to help keep this thing safe and sound. Large screen, 2.8 inch LCD screen uh, with multiple reading uh, parameters quickly and easily at the touch of a button. Although a great looking user manual. Small, but a lot of info packed into here. So save it and read it when you get this camera because there's lots of little nuances uh, to this particular thermal camera that make it worth a go-to for the user manual. So the trigger switch there it even comes with that little handheld wrist strap uh, already attached. Simple trigger mechanism to take those pictures. Nice rubberized tactile arrows. Let's just turn it on here and see how long it takes to boot up. So hold down on that power button. Bada boom, bada bing. We're greeted with the Goyojo logo. Goyojo. That has a nice sound to it, doesn't it? Takes a few seconds to boot. I'm going to guess it's going to be booting about now. There we are. So that was about 12 seconds or so. Not the fastest out there. Remember, under 200 bucks for this thing. Um, yeah. Right away. Look at that simple, easy, intuitive menu. All of your presets there. Everything is customizable. Up and down arrows. If you want to get in deeper, no problem. Languages. Hey, let's check out the languages. English. Oh, wow. Two different types of, I guess, Cantonese. And Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, lots of different presets here. Auto power off the APO. Let's go back to the APO there. And uh, it's set to off by default. Um, that battery, it's good battery. It's supposed to last for about up to seven hours, but I want this to auto shut off. Let's say after five minutes, there we are. Click it and it's now saved. So APO will auto power off the camera after five minutes. Hey, wasn't that simple? I mean, once again, you know, it's not rocket science, right? It's a thermal camera. Don't be afraid of these things. Um, they're great test instruments. They're not that hard to use. Practice makes perfect. Okay, here we are. Office setting. You can see that computer is on. Really interesting how we can go right beneath the surface and just give you a, a really good thermal look at everything. Here's a chair I was just sitting in and check that out. It's a hot tush. <laughs> this camera is super easy to operate, I gotta say. It's really just a matter of pressing a couple of buttons and away you go. Now you have lots of different presets here that we can play with which we'll look at in a second. Here we are in a server room now and check out Fusion, the visible light. Back to the thermal imaging. Lots of different presets here, depending on how you want to look at your object. Now, when you're quantifying that thermal image, it's really entirely up to you, the end user, how you want this to be uh, portrayed. And when you're ready for that, uh, Overview, you do a picture. Just hold down on that trigger and it will save it to the onboard storage. So simple to operate. This camera is really, what I like about it is the fact that you have that ease of use, but you've got a lot of different things under the hood. You can obviously play with the emissivity. It by default goes to the uh, standard 0.91-ish setting. Remember, emissivity is how that thermal imaging uh, reaction appears so the different type of objects have different emissivity it's how they bounce that thermal image back to you so it's an important setting one i think that's often overlooked in the world of thermal imaging for newbies and uh, yeah read up on that emissivity it makes a big difference when you're getting uh, that thermal image for review lots more settings here as you can see distance another important one so you know want to make sure you're have your proper distance setting when you're taking those pictures because it is once again important how that camera, how the sensors are actually 
going to be gathering information, thermal information. So make sure the distance and everything is something that you preset before you take those images. Look at the heat being generated from those network cables. Unbelievable amounts of heat being generated in a server room. That's why server rooms are normally ice cold because uh, the heat is obviously a killer for electronics. Some really cool imaging here going on. We got the visible light, which basically is displays the visible light images only. And you can have something called the fusion mode, which is an overlay of visible light onto the thermal image. So you're basically getting a preview of a fused image uh, with sharper ed edges compared to the regular thermal imaging mode. Kind of neat. And uh, this one really does it with the push of a button. Very, very nice. Once again, a ton of heat and uh, heat signatures on electronics equipment, networking equipment, especially a great way to troubleshoot something. Uh, check this out. Oh my God, it's a POE adapter. Look how hot it is. That white is pure heat radiating, radiating off of that little adapter. That thing is hot. Oh man, hope it doesn't, it doesn't explode. Ah. Uh. So you can tell long-term wear and tear simply by pulling out that thermal camera and taking an overlay of your network. You know which components aren't gonna last that long just due to the heat. Some modems on the wall. And once again, just generating a ton of heat. Very cool. And I've got to say the, the thermal images themselves, you can see the clarity, the contrast, the, the color is just incredible. So very impressive uh, for the price, this Goyojo thermal camera. I, I got to say, I wasn't expecting that much to be honest with you, but generally speaking, I am uber impressed with the imaging quality uh, for what you're getting. Now, of course, you can pay a ton more and get, you know, perhaps better uh, overall professional results. But I'm telling you, if, if, if you're a weekend tech, weekend warrior, a do-it-yourself kind of guy at the home, even for your business, if you don't need anything too uh, overly complex in terms of thermal images, you know, this camera should suffice. The clarity, the contrast, unbelievable. Out of the server room and into the back room. Once again, nice, clear visual display of that thermal image on that garage door. Rainbow, white hot, hot spot. Now this is kind of cool. It's just a power bar, a power bar, but look at the heat again coming from those power adapters. Look at that. And here we are with that overlying fusion mode, gives you a really good indicator of what I was talking about earlier. So that fusion mode superimposing itself on top of the thermal imaging mode. We'll just go back to that here in a second. And you can see thermal imaging mode and now fusion mode. And see how those outlines are just coming up, giving you a really good outline of the thermal image in general. Oh, great. Closing thoughts on the Goyo GH340 Thermal Energy Camera. Oh yeah, I like it. You know I like it. Hey, right out of the box, it has that solid feel. It doesn't have a cheap toy like finish or feel. No, this thing is definitely a test instrument. Verbosely speaking, it's a solid rocket. Eight gigs of built-in storage, that's huge. That's like 30,000 thermal images. But hey, it does have a caveat. And you got it, no video recording, none at all. That's a bummer. But if you can do without that, I think you've got a real winner here. 2.8 inch color screen that is bright enough for most of the outdoor work. Big bright menus, intuitive icons, intuitive layout, has an overall easy breezy thermal camera experience. Hey, Goyojo gets a solid four out of five stars. Yeah, it's not the most advanced thermal camera out there, but I'll tell you what, it does a darn good job at what it does. Thanks for watching this review, everybody. Till the next one, keep on testing.